Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create a shader to help you create graphic compositions in Blender, and also how to apply the shader to your models. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's begin by dragging up the bottom panel and changing it to the shader editor. So, drag it up, click right over here and change it to shader editor. Now, usually Blender has a basic material assigned to the default cube. Let's get rid of the principal BSDF. To begin creating our material, let's create a diffuse BSDF. Like so. Now, let's create a shader to RGB. That's our second node here, so shader to RGB. Let's connect those two, BSDF to shader. And the third one we need is a color ramp. So let's create a color ramp, connect it color to factor, and let's connect it to the material output. Okay, now let's switch to EV. Okay, so once in rendered mode, let's drag our cube up on the Z axis by clicking G, Z, and typing 1. Now let's create a plane so we can have cast shadows to help us visualize our material. As you can see, our new material is already applied to the cube. But there's no difference on the material, and that's because at the color ramp, we need to change the interpolation between the color stops from linear to constant. So let's change it over here from linear to constant. And now we can see that the material is behaving differently. Let's click on the white slider and drag it to the left until all the faces in the light appear white. This is enough for now, but we'll probably have to fine tune it later. Now let's apply the material to our plane. So select the plane and from the drop down list select the material. And you can see it's odd because it's a flat face with this kind of circular shadow. So let's adjust the slider here so the flat face looks evenly lit. So let's take care of the cast shadow now. We can improve the way it looks. So let's first select our light and under the properties of this light expand shadow and tick on contact shadows. Now, let's turn on ambient occlusion, and under shadows, let's change the cube size to 4096 pixels, okay? And also, let's get rid of the soft shadows. Now we have a perfect graphic sharp shadow, and that's what we want, all right? Great. Now, let's add another solid, maybe a cylinder, and see how our shader behaves. So, Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder, and let's move it up. Now, let's scale the cylinder on the X and Y axis. So let's hit S and then Shift Z to constrain our scale to the X and Y axis. Now, let's shade it smoothly. So right click and shade smooth. And remember to auto smooth the normals. Now, let's apply our new material and bang, works perfectly. White faces in the light and black shadows and cast shadows, perfect. And this works great for our graphic thumbnail compositions, but we will need a backdrop for our figures in most cases. So let's create a backdrop, okay? So let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and select Plane. And now let's move it behind our objects and let's rotate it by 90 degrees. So R, Y, and 90. And let's scale it and move it up. And again, let's apply our material. And this looks pretty cool. But sometimes you just want a flat color without cast shadows to have a better read of your objects against it. So let's create two different versions of our material. Now let's go to our material properties tab and let's create a new slot for our material by clicking on the plus sign. Let's add the same material to this slot. Now click on this number here to make this material unique so we can modify it. We can now delete those two nodes on the left because we won't need them Let's slide back our white slider all the way to the right. Now let's select the black slider and make it also white. So click on it and make it white. Now we can delete the original slot material and the new material is applied automatically to our plane. And look at this, pure flat white and no cast shadows. But maybe that's what you want. But sometimes, if you have a predominance of white objects, you may need a pure black backdrop. So let's repeat the process. Let's create a new material slot. 
but at this time we want it to be pure black and that it doesn't receive no lights. Let's create a new slot to our material and let's apply the material we have to that slot. Now let's make this material unique and let's delete the original slot. Now we can modify the color ramp so let's turn both sliders to pure black. So both left and right sliders you just click on them and slide it all the way down to make pure black and now we have a pure black flat plane without any lights even though lights shining upon it it's pure black so this is really great for the reading of our materials the reading of our silhouettes against this black background all right so now let's see how do we apply this material to our own models okay so let's hit a to select everything and x to delete everything so a and x and now i just have a clean blank scene let's import an obj figure and i created this figure in das 3d which is a free software okay so one thing you need to remember when you export your figure from das 3d remember to uncheck right surfaces since we will not use those materials and this will make your life much easier to apply the new materials we just created okay so let's scale down our figure let's zoom in just a little bit and now let's create a sunlight so shift a light sun and let's grab this on the z axis and let's rotate it on the x axis and then on the Z axis again. So we have sort of a 45 degree angle light which creates good lights and shadows. So now it's time to apply our material. And look at this pure white lights and black shadows. This is very graphic. This is very cool. So now you can set up entire scenes using these materials we just created. And this will help you creating quick and interesting graphic thumbnail compositions by varying the camera angles, zooming in specific areas. Well, you get the idea, right? So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Bye bye.